Hi everyone, my name is Aaron Rump, and what we're going to do today is we're going to go over several inspection techniques that will be useful when you go to start inspecting your parts. As you can see, we have several parts that we are able to machine in the shop. However, you're going to have to use a lot of these inspection tools and more to make these parts work. Okay, You have to know what that dimension is and you have to be able to measure it. So this video will be pretty lengthy, however, if you look on the screen, you can see the timestamps on what we will be covering in that time period. So if you need to look at your measuring perpendicularity, as you can see down here at the bottom, you can skip ahead to that point in the video and actually watch that area. This will be very helpful so that you can keep one video and you can just skip ahead to what you need. So without any further ado, let's get to inspecting. The digital height gauge and dial indicator setup. This inspection setup is one of the most versatile pieces of equipment that will be found in most machine shops because it is able to measure so many varieties of inspection. It's able to check heights, it's able to check the depths, it's able to check hole locations, and it's able to check GD and T callouts such as perpendicularity and parallelism. So with that said, the first thing I do when I come up to this piece of equipment is I want to make sure that my dial indicator is loaded in here correctly. So if I loosen this knob on the top, I can load and unload this onto the height gauge. The next thing I want to make sure I have is if you'll notice, I have my indicator at a 30 degree angle to the table. What I want to do is I want to try to check from here to here. So if you look at our print, we want to measure that. And looking at our print, we can see that that measurement that I pointed to, or that distance, is 875 thousandths. That is what the part should measure. And if you look down here at the bottom, I have a call out of plus or minus two thousandths. So that's what we're going to be checking, is to make sure this is intolerance. So coming back to here, when I measure at a 30 degree angle, I want to make sure that my indicator isn't pointing straight down because as you can tell, I'm not gonna be able to get a good reading on that. So, we'll move this back to a 30 degree angle, and you don't have to be specific on this, you just wanna make sure that you're very close to being parallel with the surfaces that you're measuring. So, first thing we'll do is we will turn on our digital height gauge, and I have to zero, I have to take this indicator, and I have to bring it down to the surface that I'm gonna be locating on. So I'm gonna come down to the surface, and if you'll watch my needle that's on the dial, I'm gonna come down very slowly until that engages and it goes all the way to the 15 thousandths mark. Now it's up to you whether or not you want to have it go to the zero, so one full rotation, or halfway. What's important is that you remember what you went when we go to move this, and I'll explain why. So for me, I went halfway around my indicator to the 15. That is going to be my zero location. And if you wanted to, you could simply turn the dial and make that zero. But for me, out of, out of a habit, I've always gone to the 15. Next thing I wanna do is if you'll notice, this also has to reflect the position we're in, which is also zero. So I'll push zero ABS. So now this is at zero and this is at the 15. That means that I am where I need to be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply gonna grab this hand wheel that's on the back of here and I'm gonna hold my height gauge securely in place and I'm just going to raise it up. Now if you go the wrong direction, you may have to re-zero. So if you'll keep an eye on my indicator right here, You'll notice right before I make contact, I slow down and I go very slowly until I get to the 15, or in this case, halfway around my dial indicator. So now looking at this, you'll see that that distance is 871 thousandths. Now per my blueprint, that is out of tolerance, but that's not the point of this. The point is to show you that this part can be inspected with the height gauge indicator. So for the next piece of this, I'm gonna show you on a different part. Now that I have my next part, as you can look at our blueprint here, you'll see that I wanna be checking this 300 thousandths depth. 
So from A plane, the top of the part, the depth of that profile needs to be 300 thousandths. So in this example, we're gonna be using our height gauge indicator to check the measurement of this 300 thousandths dimension. So that is from A plane, which is zero, down 300 thousandths, which means this profile needs to be 300 thousandths down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure my height gauge is on, and then I'm going to handle up to the top of my part. When I come down to the top of my part, for this example, I'll have it come to the zero. Doesn't matter as long as you remember where you went. So as you can see, I'm on the zero, and if it's off a little bit, you can just simply use your fingers and get that dial in there. That's what's so useful about this, okay? So the next thing I wanna do is I want to zero where I'm at because this is the top of the part. So if I move my indicator across it, you see that it's nice and flat. But what I wanna measure is how deep that profile is. So from here, I have it zeroed. I will simply handle down until I get close to that surface and then I will go to the zero. So once I'm at the zero, you'll see that the depth of that profile is 300 one thousandths and five tenths, which is in tolerance. Something I like to do is I like to move the part around very slowly so that I can see that it is still within the tolerance all the way around. If I wanted to, I could simply lift up my indicator and move it to a different location and then come down and touch it again. So it's very helpful because you're gonna know the whole surface location without having to move a whole bunch of uh, measuring tools to different locations. So very useful for checking our depths. And on the next example, I will show you how to check hole locations. In order for us to accurately check holes, first we have to know what the hole size is. So if we look at our print, we can see that we have a hole size of 375 thousandths. Now we will have to know what half of that is. So before we go any further, we will simply type that into our calculator. So 375 thousandths divided by two is 187 thousandths. If you need to write that down, but for the video purposes, you'll be just fine. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this one inch 500 thousandths dimension. Now if you'll notice where the line is drawn, it goes to the center of the hole. However, when we're measuring the center of the hole, we don't have anything to actually measure on. Therefore, what we'll have to do is using our height gauge and dial indicator setup, we will find the bottom of the hole. So with that said, we will move our indicator down to our table because first thing we have to do is zero it out. So I'll bring it to zero, and then I will zero out. So now that my table is Z zero, I can measure different, uh, different dimensions that all come off the bottom of this part. So for this part right here, I'm going to have to flip this around so that it matches the orientation of the part on my blueprint. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna come up and I wanna to touch the bottom of that hole with my indicator. Now this is a little bit tricky, so pay close attention to the dial indicator. I'm gonna bring it to the face of my hole. I don't wanna come in at an angle. I wanna come straight towards my part, and then I'm gonna start raising it up. Now I'm gonna raise it up so that I can get my indicator right inside that hole. Now. I want to be as close to the center as I can, so as I start lowering it, I should be in the center of my hole, but I will show you how to find that. So you'll see my, my dial is moving to zero. So now that it's on the zero, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it from left to right, and you'll see that my indicator dial is finding the lowest spot of my hole. So the lowest spot of my hole is right there. At that point in time, I won't touch anything right here. I will simply move it down to the zero. 
that means that is going to be this the lowest part of my hole so on here my readout says one inch three hundred and six thousandths now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to my previous number and I'm going to find out exactly what that number is so when I hit 187 thousandths of five tenths plus that one inch 306 thousandths and I hit enter you'll see that it measures one inch 493 thousandths and five tenths which again is at a tolerance but that's what this is for we are finding out what parts are in tolerance and what parts are out of tolerance so again before you leave the hole you can raise up and you can come down here and do the same method checking another hole just like that so for this next area of using this height gauge indicator I'm going to be checking the parallelism of this part now if you look on the print the symbol actually represents flatness however this top of this part if I had a parallelism parallelism symbol of five thousandths I'm going to show you how I would check that right there of course parallelism is going to be two diagonal lines right next to each other so with that said I'm going to check the parallelism of the top of this part to the bottom of this part and what I mean by that is my part right here is on the table so the bottom of my part is going to be zero and I need the top of my part to be parallel within five thousandths of the other side so with that said I don't have to use this function of the height gauge at all so I can simply turn it off and I'm gonna just raise my indicator up so that I can get my part underneath it now what I'm doing is I'm going to be moving my part underneath it and then I'm simply going to come down and touch the top of my part and I'll bring it to the zero at this point in time I'm going to just move my part around and I'm gonna watch my indicator now if you'll notice the indicator is not moving hardly at all that's very good that means my parallelism on this part is less than one thousandths however if I had had my part zeroed right here and I had come over here and then I had my indicator right at five thousandths it's harder than it looks that means that I would have a five thousandths taper in my parallelism or deviation whichever one you like to call it however in this case my part is very flat therefore it is in tolerance with the parallelism and that's a pretty easy way of using this to check that the next thing I want to check on this part is going to be the perpendicularity so if you look at our print we can see that on our C plane there is a call out for perpendicularity of five thousandths to A and B plane so what we're going to be doing is checking perpendicularity to B plane so if you'll notice on my setup right here I am actually have my part loaded on the one two three block on the B plane because in order to check this correctly I have to be mounted on B plane or C plane and then I have to run my dial indicator on the surface that's perpendicular to the call out so what does that mean so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my indicator and I'm gonna run it right here on C plane right where I'm pointing to is right here C plane so I usually like to top, start at the top and I just move my dial indicator until it gets to about the 15 and then I'm just gonna slowly push it down until it comes off the part once it comes off the part I come up back to the 15 and you can see that my dial indicator did not move more than five thousandths away from the C plane and that is how you check perpendicularity depth micrometers zero to one inch measuring so on this example as you can see we're going to be using our depth micrometers and we're going to be checking this part but what I want to do is I want to look at my blueprint because I'm going to be checking a certain dimension so the dimension I'm going to be checking is going to be do this 625 thousandths dimension and that 625 thousandths dimension is going to be measured with our depth micrometers so in order to do that we'll take our part and we'll flip it upside down 
and that is going to be measuring from this surface to this surface right there. All right, so the first thing we want to do whenever we get our depth micrometers is we always want to make sure they are on zero. So anytime I pick up depth micrometers, if you see them on zero, I usually take them and I back them up a little bit. I put it on a surface. You can put it on a one, two, three block to make sure it's uh, zeroed out. If you're at the machine, don't use the top of your toolbox, but I usually just hold it down one finger or two finger and I go until I hear the clicks. Now when I hear the clicks, I want to make sure that it is on the zero. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it is on the zero very, very nicely. So what I'm going to do now is if it's 625 thousandths, what I'll do is I'll take this and I will take it to the 600 thousandths dimension. Now remember, on depth micrometers, you haven't reached the dimension until you have covered it up. So if that's 500 thousandths, I haven't, re I haven't reached it until I've covered it up. So there's 575 thousandths, and here comes 600 thousandths. So at this point in time, I'm gonna go ahead and set it on top of my part, and you can see that I'm still up above it, and keeping my pressure on here, now this works out pretty good that I have it on both sides. If need to, you can just put it on one side, either way will work. But I'm gonna feel pretty comfortable with this, make sure you're not on the chamfer, a lot of people get on the chamfer. You want to make sure you are going to come down on the correct surface. So holding it down, I'm just going to slightly turn it until I hear my ratchet stop start clicking. If you don't have a ratchet stop, just go until you feel it just like that. So then I'll go ahead and lock it and I'll look at my reading. So on my blueprint, it's supposed to be 625 thousandths. On here, I've got 625 thousandths. So that worked out pretty good and a lot of times I'm gonna turn this around and it, feel free to check it in several different spots to make sure it is where it's supposed to be. All right, and that's how you use your depth micrometers. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I really hope this helps with your inspection techniques. Just remember that even though we just covered just a small variety of inspection tools, that there's so much more out there that you're able to use and learn on and make sure that you use these tools to get that exact accuracy that you're needing to inspect those parts. Again, my name is Aaron Runt. Thank you for watching.